Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, can you please confirm it at the chat once again if my voice is clear? All right, perfect. So hi, good morning everyone. I hope all of you are doing wonderful. We are back with yet another amazing speaker session for this month. And today we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Ravi Anjan. He has over a decade of experience in the data industry and is currently working with the publicist Sapien. He's not only a seasonal data science professional, but also a great mentor. And we are very excited to have him here on this platform to guide us through the journey of decoding data science from aspiring to accomplished. So before we begin, guys, this goes without saying, and I would really like to remind everyone to please be respectful in the chat and please post your questions in the Q&A tab. We'll take it up at the end of the session and please do not spam the chat. I hope I'm clear. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Ravi Ranjan. Over to you, Ravi. Hey, thank you. Hey, hi, good morning. Um, let me see. If I, can... I, I hope uh, you are able to access the chat and the Q&A, right? Yeah, I can. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just trying to see, to share my screen. Yeah, yeah. I'll share, I'll stop sharing. You can just start sharing. Okay. Okay, I believe um, you can see the deck, right? Yeah, the screen is visible. Mm -hmm. It's not the presenter view, right? It's yeah, not the presenter view, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, hey, so good morning again. And thank you for joining in over the weekend, that early morning, right? Um, and today we are sitting here to talk and discuss about how to decode um, my journey of data science and how I aspired my career almost 10 years back. And then uh, obvious, I have not reached at that place, but still the journey is on, right? Um, so in the next 40, 45 minutes, we are going to talk about my journey, how it started, um, then my career roadmap, then we'll talk about how to handle end-to-end -end data science, how to prepare for data science, what are things that one need to do and don't do, then how you should build your uh, resume or profile very effective to be notified or get noticed over the um, LinkedIn, because that is a de facto platform that majorly we use for our professional journey, right? And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. So, my journey, right? So I, I started my career almost 10 years back. So I passed my engineering in computer science and 2013, I started my career as STE, Software Development Engineer, because I believe 10 years back, it was not data science per se. The industry was not so much evolved. That time data science was majorly for uh, the research purpose. The college and the universities are working on we're working on building the uh, algorithms and solution, right? So um, I started my career at STE and later on two years as STE, I moved from uh, software engineering to data science, right? So if you see, I started my career at STE from L&D Infotech and then there I served as a, a developer where I worked on .NET uh, backend as my uh, SQL Server and then JavaScript as a front end, right? And then uh, that was the time I believe this uh, industry shift happened, where a um, lot of industry, a lot of organization uh, find the importance of AI and how to leverage AI to build their business, or you can say to 
have some positive impact on their business right so that was the uh, industry shift happen and at that wave i believe i also made a shift from science to engineering and in ibm i was working as a uh, data scientist where i was primarily working on ibm watson that is one of the product and there i worked on the finance domain where i need to detect the fraud and um, multiple use cases i won't go into the detail of the use case because uh, the whole agenda i talk, thought about is to uh, share my experience right maybe uh, technicality i i i can answer at the end in the q and a right and then 2018 i moved to uh, publicis sapien and from 2018 since now i am associated with publicis sapien organization and and in the past 5 years i will say i learned a lot in this organization where uh, i started with uh, a very naive problem then year on year i learned a lot of thing now if someone asks me that okay um, uh, who are you in a one line right so i primarily say i am a data scientist who can work on data product from inception to production and i believe that is what um, most of us who are in data science domain or in ai domain i won't uh, scope it to data science who are in ai domain or who want to aspire to be in ai domain they need to think on that note right that okay how to uh, work on data product from inception to production so this is about my uh, professional career then what i believe is that all the things that i learned in past 10 years uh, i must share with the community right so it's more like collaborative learning that's why from 2020 i started participating actively in the conferences now uh, data google certification on google cloud architect and then um, associated with educative to build their course um alma better to take sessions um recently i pursued one course from berkeley on how to strategize the data road map for an organization right so why i'm talking a lot about this slides that maybe this will give you a reference that what we need to do um, and i believe uh, this is where i struggled a lot because uh, again 8 years back there was not so much resources that someone tell me that hey this is the path that i need to follow and then i can be a well established uh, technologist in xyz field right nowadays um, there are a lot of information the internet is flooded with information and again uh, uh, less information is dangerous and too much information is also dangerous because that may confuse you but if you see this particular slide let's talk about the whole thing from where i started and where i'm right now so maybe you can take this as a relevance or again i don't uh, ask any one to copy it but you can do a cherry pick kind of thing that okay fine out of these things x y z are the things that is more relatable or rational for you right so going ahead so um, we talked about okay how i uh, traversed or grow in this career but i have jotted down my learnings that what all things i have done to reach at this point or maybe i can say now i can say i know some ai I, that's what i said i won't so that uh, i know everything about that but uh, years back i i was like okay i don't have much idea about ai but now i can say okay i have some idea about ai right so we'll talk about the career road map so uh, this is very very uh, intuitive you will not see my slides lot of information flooded mostly i prefer to talk more than people read my slides so pardon if you feel that hey there is less information on the slides or the deck so uh, what is talks about being co so earlier we, we we are more like okay i need to know one thing right and later on as things evolve it was like okay i need to know one thing but i need to be aware of lot many things so that is what i means that i know one thing in detail then the shift come to t where it said that i know one thing in detail but i need to be aware of lot of things that was t but right now you need to be kum which means if you see this yellow part right this look more like a kum what it means is that 
you need to be expertise in multiple areas why i'm talking about this is that it's not a software engineering when i say data science or data analyst or ml engineer or ai engineer so these are the uh, four lingo that people use a lot in the ai industry right so all these need multiple expertise to be a champion again i i uh, emphasize the word champion that is very important and then what we need to emphasize it's all about uh, i have uh, i have a slide at the end where it shows about the detail that what one need to be focused on but in a not in shell long story short is to be a successful data scientist you need to know mathematics you need to know programming you need to know presentation now you will say hey, uh, it's a tech job why you need to be presentable because at the end of the day it's all about how you describe or present your solution to the end user or customers right so if you see right now i talked about um, three important thing mathematics programming and presentation right so you need to be a cool mindset where expertise in multiple field moving to the next one do as many diverse projects as you can what it mean is that couple of you folks are already in data science world or some of you are aspiring to be in data science field right for every one try to work on as many diverse project you can now what it mean is that it's not about okay uh, i will join some course or maybe um, i will go and watch some youtube playlist on ai that is good but what i prefer is that always start with a problem statement now from where to start the best starting point is kegel that that is what i did almost 8 years back i started solving the problem of kegel that helped me to understand where i stand in this whole community of ai right because uh, kegel had the leaderboard so you need to work on diverse project again what it mean is that diverse doesn't mean that okay uh, you start with the advanced analytics then you suddenly jump to nlp then you suddenly jump to computer vision but for me if you pick one thing like okay i need to be pro in natural language processing so try to solve multiple type of problem in natural language considering entity recognition pols chatbot lot more right moving to the next one remember real world is not kegel right so what i see is that people start with kegel they solve lot of problem and then they find that okay um now i know lot of things but that is uh, not the real story kegel is uh, in a very bigger picture or you can say in the whole universe kegel is just a small star but we need to think about the universe that's why kegel is not the real world that will help you to learn the things but how one need to build ai solutions we need to go one level up that is what how to uh, monitor the model how to deploy the model now you are making the predictions but how that prediction is getting consumed by the business right let's say i build a classification model with say uh, cat or dog i'm happy that i solved the problem with 90% accuracy but is it going to solve the purpose no right we need to tell business that hey if you come up with a image and if you are not sure you need to invest x amount of money to train your people on hmm, how to identify cat and dog rather we build a solution where you need to you do not need to train your um, employees it's the system that is going to make the prediction right so you need to think on the other side of the world also then do not box yourself what it mean is that most of the time uh, we box ourselves into the purview of data science that okay i want to be a data scientist i should know only model dot fit and model dot product but that is not the case because uh, sometime your data the data which you are getting from the business or the upstream system that is not so much clean or pure again i am taking very very uh, naive example so that 
everyone in this uh, session can understand what box means, right? So when we start building a machine learning model, the first and foremost thing is that the data, where is the data, right? Most of the time we get clean data and then we start uh, jumping into the EDAs and start building the model. But that is not the scenario in a lot of the case in the real world, right? That's what I said, uh, Kegel is not the real world. And do not box yourself. What it means is that though your focus will be data science, but you need to be aware of the other side of the world. That what is your upstream? What is your downstream? How it can be consumed? How you can consume the data? Right? Now, learning business nuances. Um, this is also one of the myth is that most of the time we need to see that, okay, uh, data science, which means mathematics and programming, build the machine learning model, get some good accuracy done, right? As I gave the example a couple of minutes back, that if you build a solution um, that uh, predict cat or dog, but if, if you do not know what business want, right, you cannot build the right solution. That's why when you say, when you see it in the beginning, I said, is that, I describe myself a data scientist who can build data product from inception to production, right? So inception, which means learning business nuances, right? At day zero, I do not run behind data. That okay, where is the data? Where is the data? I need the data to build the model. At day zero, I always try to figure out that who is the person who can teach me the business? What the organization do, right? At which point they are doing good? What are the key pain areas? For those key pain areas, what are the data that is needed to address? And then I reach to a conclusion that, okay, now I have good amount of information to start my uh, data science track, or you can say data science use case track, right? So learning business nuances is really, very important. I see a lot of uh, folks joining from college, I know, they are very new to the corporate world, but mostly I see in the college folks that, okay, they directly land to hear me um, when we are going to build the model. Right? But for those folks, I say, hey, hold on. Uh, try to understand the gravity of the business because uh, if you do not understand the business, it becomes very tough for you when you start building the model. Then you, you will get lost that what I need to solve. Again, the things which I am solving is actually solving the purpose of the uh, organization or not, right? Then don't get enamored with tech and algo. Uh, right now it's a Gen AI world in, in I believe 2022, November, uh, Open AI made a remarkable, uh, you can say, they disrupt the whole AI world with the, uh, uh, adaptation of chat GPT or generative AI. And in the past one year, again, there is a shift in the AI industry, right? From predictive AI, it is moving to generative AI mindset. So earlier it was predictive AI. We were trying to make predictions on the data. Now it's shifted from predictive AI that we need to generate. So at this point of time, uh, that is what happened with me. That whenever I go on LinkedIn, I see 10 new things on LinkedIn that, hey, these things happen, that things happen, blah, 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 right? I think this happened with a lot of people, again, in the different domain. But don't get enamored with tech and algo. My, my one important thing is that be strong at your basics. That is the de facto non-negotiable skill, right? Because technology, the... Uh, Fancy tech will come and go, right? Uh, because you never know. Maybe after five years, something new come. The right is now Gen AI. Maybe some Y AI come into the picture, right? You never know. But if you are very strong with your foundations, it becomes very easy for you to pick up any new things come in the market, right? So please, please, please focus on your basics, right? And uh, tip number six. This storytelling is the key, apply abstraction, right? At the end of the day, um, whatever you build, uh, as a STE, it is easy because whatever I build is nothing a web app or a mobile app. If I talk about the end product, correct? 
and who are going to use it? it it is the end user going to use it but majorly in ai world whatever you build is going to impact someone's business right and and when something is impacting someone's business it is very tough to convince i think uh, one of the most important skill one need to learn apart from technology is storytelling i think um, it took me a lot of years to learn it because uh, uh, technically I was very sound. Uh, I built a lot of great product, but I struggled to uh, sell it to the business or you can say struggle to convince businesses, hey, this is the problem and this is the solution. Right. So storytelling is the key. Apply abstraction. So uh, maybe you can write this point. Uh, Minto pyramid principle. Barbara Minto. Uh, she was uh, the employee of McKenzie. And she invested 20, 25 years in uh, creating the reports and a lot more. And with her experience, she uh, built a framework of how to uh, be very effective at client presentation. And that's what became popular as Minto Pyramid Principle. So maybe you can explore over the weekend or some free time that what I'm talking about, what storytelling means. Now, zoom in and zoom out this is again correlated to what all things the past six tips is that at any given point of time you need to know deep you want to go into a problem statement and how much spectrum you need to cover what I mean is that whenever you're solving a problem statement sometimes we feel that okay this is one problem and this is one solution but if you see in detail, uh, if you try to understand the business, that is very important. And that happened is that when we try to understand someone's business before actually building the model, we try to jot down the key pain areas, right? And if I jot down 100 uh, pain areas, actually it needs 10 solutions. That's it. You don't need 100 solutions to address 100 pain areas. You just need 10, 20 solution and that's going to uh, uh, so a lot of the problem because most of the problem are interlinked. If you solve the top problem, it is going to solve all the other problem, which is actually in the chain way. So that's why zoom in and zoom out is very important when you are working in the AI world. Right now, what we discussed right now is that my career, then what we discuss is the roadmap. What should be the mindset of a person? to be successful in data science world, or I will say AI world. Now, uh, in the next couple of minutes, I'm more into that. Now we have fair understanding that uh, how industry work, what should my mindset. Now, how to handle an end-to-end -end data product or project, right? Again, inception to production. I keep emphasizing this word, inception to production. Nothing in between that, okay, suddenly you pitch in, hey, I want to build a machine learning model. I'm done. No. If you want to grow in this field, you need to cover the both horizon. So let's talk about how to handle end-to-end -end data science project. So understand the context, ask relevant questions. So whenever you get a problem statement, do not directly jump into solving it. That's what I talked about day zero. Right? Whenever you get a problem, take a step back, sit, go through the problem statement, go through uh, Google that how other people have solved it. Or maybe that is a very unique problem. No one has solved it. Right? So try to understand the context, then build a questionnaire. What are the assumptions you are making? What are the corner case you are making? Right? So data project is a lot more about assumptions. Without assumptions, you cannot build a data product. Right? So that's what you need to understand the context. You need to assume and then ask relevant questions that, hey, with this assumptions, I am trying to build this uh, solution, which is going to address XYZ problem. Right now, next one define KPI upfront and how to validate it. This is very important. Why? Because um, I get a problem statement, and uh, 
I have uh, made a fair assumptions. I had a relevant question addressed by the client. But now I'm building a solution. How to validate it? It is performing well or not. Now I'm, I'm not talking about, okay, I'm, I'm building a regression model. So I will take RMSC or R square for my evaluation metrics, or maybe I'm building classification models. So I will take precision recall and accuracy as my evaluation metrics. No, that is the mathematical evaluation of your model. That is not going to tell how it is going to impact the business, right? So the first level of evaluation is mathematical. I'm not telling that ignore the mathematical evaluation, but with the identification of mathematical evaluation, you must focus on business KPIs. That's why you need to ask relevant question with the business. That is why you need to understand the business in detail before uh, getting into solving the problem. Because if you do not understand the business, it becomes tough for you to uh, decipher the model that, okay, how it is going to impact the business. So have your bullet point KPI upfront. And first level of validation is your mathematical and the next level of validation is your what? Business validation based on X number of KPIs, right? Then the next one, right? So how where I started? Understand. Second, uh, define the KPI. Third, this is again, uh, maybe you can consider this segment, which I'm talking about tip one, tip two, tip three, tip four is a recipe for any data application. This is not restricted to any particular uh, classification or uh, regression model nine, right? So whenever you uh, land to a data science problem, please follow this step. That will make your life very easy and that will reflect you as a champion data science, right? So create a baseline. What it means is that, um, I think a couple of minutes back, I said, whenever I uh, go on LinkedIn, I see lot and lot of new things come up in the market. And then I feel that, okay, um, shall I solve this problem with the new approach? Absolutely no, right? So whenever you get a problem statement, always start with the baseline. It's like uh, you have a point and you want to predict head or tell. So what you will do is that you will take a, a random flip, which means 0.5%, uh, point, uh, 50% is the probability of head, 50% is the probability of tail, right? So in the AI world, we always say that create the baseline model, that this is the benchmark which you need to surpass, which you need to cross, right? So start with the baseline and then start building the complex models. Start with the baseline, then try to uh, pick up some appropriate model. Then going further, maybe uh, you do some hyperparameter tuning. Maybe going further, you can explore multiple model with multiple hyperparameter tuning strategies, right? So if you see, this is a journey. It's not like that one day I get a problem. Um, I got the I got the solution, and the night. Say that, okay, this is the solution, this is the approach, and this will work well. Right? Now, what next? So we have fair understanding of business, success KPI, uh, we built baseline model, and from there, I incrementally improvised my model. So what is the key important thing one need to do? Track your experiments. Again, this is very important. Why? Um, Sometimes what happens, we get lost in uh, development a lot that it becomes tough for me to go back and see, okay, what I did in the past, or maybe go back and see uh, uh, what thing worked well in my previous experiment, right? So again, uh, tracking your experiment does not mean that you need to run behind a very zazzy uh, tool like Qflow or MLflow. If you have, great. If you do not have na, a simple Excel going to work, that is what sometimes I do. If I build a number of models and then I need to do a comparative evaluation, what I do, every experiment I document in Excel, my uh, algorithm name, 
my experiment name, what was the outcome, and my comments. And that is how, let's say, if I uh, try to solve one problem in seven different ways, I have all those seven different ways documented, which means at the end of the experiment, I can do a fair comparison that out of six or seven approaches, which is working best. And then I can take that best solution in our case, that best model to the next step, maybe the uh, deployment or generating the insight for the business. So experimentation, tracking experimentation is again very important and you can start with a very simple excel to a complex uh, tool like kubeflow ml for there are a lot of tools uh, on the cloud also to track your experiments correct so moving to the next step is journal what worked what did not that is what i said i have a comment section in my excel Okay. So, majorly what we do that we always uh, talk a lot about, hey, uh, uh, there's something new came in the market and I tried to implement it, it worked. Bingo. Wow. But we never talk about na, huh, how many times we failed. That is very important because uh, something I say to all the new grads who join my organization, fail as early as possible. That is the most happiest thing when you uh, in the technology world. Because if you fail early enough, it gives you a lot of bandwidth to think something else. But if you are not failing early and if you are failing at the later stage, then become tough to again we start and go at point zero. So journal what worked and what did not. That's what I talked about the Excel. That when you solve this uh, problem with six different approaches, what were the hurdles that you need to solve before coming to the final answer? And that is help you to dissect the whole result. That may be uh, uh, solution six and solution two. Solution two is working best but it have a lot of complexity when you take this model live solution two is working best solution six is not best let's say solution two have 96 percent accuracy solution six have uh, 94 percent accuracy right it's a drop of two percent in the performance but solution six is more easy to go live what should uh, means what should we do in the most of the scenario, again, I'm not talking about the medical and a uh, couple of more business domain because where the accuracy of 0.% AB is very, very crucial. But in the uh, more normalized scenario, um, drop of 2% is not a big thing. Okay? So if you uh, journal what worked, what did not work and dissect the results, it become very easy to understand. And then uh, productionization and monitoring of the model. This is the final step that, okay, I'll build the model. I know which uh, uh, solution is working well. Let's go live. Then once you go live, do not stop there. You need to be in a regular uh, connect with the business that how it is performing on the live data. Everything looks good when you work on the training data. But the moment when you land to live or go to production, it's a bizarre, right? So you started uh, from understanding the business, build the model, track it, document it, evaluate against KPI, then uh, deploy it and have a regular feedback from the business. So that is how uh, I work. And I think that is my recipe to deliver a successful uh, data or AI product. Moving to the next one, right? So I think now you have fair understanding that, okay, uh, who am I? Uh, what is the mindset of an AI person? Uh, how to handle an end-to-end -end, um, data science project? Now let's talk about to land to this job, how one should um, prepare the resume. What is do's and don't do's, right? Because uh, I get a lot of resume with a lot of overburdened things. Right. So, resume is your first representation, make it count. What it means is that I do not prefer uh, resume more than one page. 
are simple as that. Because for me, it's become very tough to read to each point and then remember all those points when I sit uh, to take the interview of the candidate. So I prefer one pager where only the bullet point which reflect your work. Then keep it honest. Right now I see uh, people flood the information in the resume. And when I start probing all those things that do you know this, do you know that? And once I get into the detail of that, people fail. So be honest, if you know something, tell that, hey, I'm not throwing that, but I have fitness knowledge, given a time and opportunity, I will be growing that. That's what, do not sprinkle the buzzword, generating AI in this market, right? Now I see each and every resume may have two things common, LangChain and LLM. But the moment when I ask one question that, okay, tell me how to build a rank system, very few people talk about it. Fine, so do not sprinkle buzzword. If you know the basics, if you know the uh, name, it's okay. It's quite simple. You say to an interviewer that I know only two things, but you can ask me anything about these two pointers. Right? So here I talk about mention what you know. It's not about mention what is very popular in the AI world. So let's see the template. And, and uh, I have created a template for both uh, type of audience, someone who are in the college or they are looking for an entry level um, data science role or AI role. So what we need to focus, the key skills should be mathematics, uh, uh, common data science tool and programming in majorly in Python. If you have all those skills, I think fair enough to start your entry level. It's good to show the intensive project or if you remember I talked about uh, do diverse projects too many projects, right? So basic skills, the lot many projects that you do and please, please, please uh, have the community presence. I will talk about this in the later slides, which means that uh, post your uh, contributions on LinkedIn, uh, do regular check-in in the GitHub so that you can share all those links in your resume. That will talk a lot about your knowledge and the work. And brownie point, which means if you have published some research paper, if you have written some article, that's a brownie point for entry level. Now, mid level, I will say senior data science kind of thing, right? So now you know wider uh, uh, data science knowledge, which means that uh, advanced analytics, NLP together, or maybe you know advanced analytics, but how to uh, deploy the models or productionize the model. Or maybe you know uh, the deep learning in detail. So it's level up the game. Where well, you need to know the wider spectrum of data science. And here the intensive project does not work. It's a diversity of work, which means that um, I had worked on the classical machine learning problem along with I have worked on optimization problem or classical machine learning problem uh, along with building some uh, NLP like chatbot kind of thing. So have diversity in your project. And GitHub coding is de facto um, publication article that I think there is no age of writing any article or research paper. Till the time you are active and you feel that you can explore something new, you can write those articles and research paper. So that's what breadth of the skill and business impact become even more critical for senior level. So once you go to next level, then it's talk about TCAM. The entry level is basic mathematics programming. Mid level is basic mathematics programming along with the diversity. Senior level is including all and then how much money or impact you have generated and that to positive the impact you have generated on the business. Right? Now, moving on next one is that now, you know, uh, how should my resume be? And let's say you got some uh, call for the interview, right? So what is the tips for uh, cracking your data science interview? That know your stuff in and out, right? If you have mentioned two projects or if you mentioned five skills in your resume, know in detail, be confident, be proud that, hey, 
I don't know X thing, but I have mentioned Y thing in my resume and I know it well. All right. Then give business problem uh, before jumping into the solution and technical aspect. A lot of time I start, uh, I see that people directly jump into, okay, let me explain random forest. And they feel that, okay, uh, I need to uh, impress the interviewer by showing my technical problem. But whenever you talk about a uh, uh, solution, before that, always talk about what was the problem statement? What was the business context? What was the information you have? Then the solution, what you build? And then what was the challenges that you faced? That is how you need to conclude. Then highlight business impact of your project. So remember I talked about business KPI handling end-to-end -end project. So identify the KPIs. Those things you need to mention at this point of the interview. That I have built a solution. Let me talk about how it impacted the business. Now you cannot say that uh, it has a positive impact on the business. What are the major of positive? Right. So that's why if you see all these uh, slides and all the discussion are correlated. The KPI that you identified during the uh, implementation phase that you can talk boldly is that I uh, this solution uh, uh, grew the business by X percent. This solution reduced the cost of uh, operations by Y million dollar, right? So you should have, you need to quantify the business impact. Then share what work, but also highlight what did not. Again, circle back. What I mentioned is that men track your experiment and write what did not work. So, um, again, what I look into or what I look for in the interview is most of the time I ask, okay, uh, you build a great product, a great solution. Uh, tell me one scenario where you uh, failed or where you struggled a lot. And again, that's what people do not focus on what did not work. Right. So share what worked and also highlight what did not work or uh, maybe the challenges that you faced and then um, uh, how you solve those challenges. Again, that can be technical, that can be a business one. Okay. And then clarify the role in the project and team might be, uh, you can say that, okay, I was an individual contributor working along in the team, uh, playing multiple roles. And maybe I was the part of a bigger team where I worked as just a data scientist where my job was just to uh, build machine learning model. I had data engineers to bring the data to me. I had data analysis analysts to uh, make my predictions and build insightful dashboard and then share with the business. Right? So make your uh, role clear that what was the role in the project. Cool. So the next important thing which I believe is very, very, very important. So uh, again, uh, everything is happy, 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 right? Um, but very few people talk about building effective community content, right? Um, there are a lot of, right now, um, what I see is that most of the folks are looking to have their career in data science. And I think that's fair, fair uh, expectations because we all see that there are a lot of, uh, things happening in AI world, right? A uh, lot of organizations, company, countries are aggressive in adopting AI. So there's no wrong to uh, seeing career in data science. Now, it's a demand and supply game, right? Demand is more and supply is also, it's, I will say supply is not more, supply is in surplus. So there are a lot of demand, no doubt at all. But the supply is in surplus. So, how to stand out in this crowd? Everyone uh, is trying to be a data scientist. Everyone is putting their heart and soul, learning the concept, um, going through a lot of tutorials or uh, curriculums or joining institutions or colleges. But what thing that will make you, uh, or that will stand you apart in the crowd is, crowd is building effective content and community. What it means is that start early, which means uh, uh, 2021 when Gen AI come into the market, number 2021. And uh, that time, a new framework evolved called LangChain. 
right? And uh, then a couple of uh, team members in my team, they started exploring those things. And a couple of people felt that, okay, this is no, this is very new. A uh, lot of clients are not looking into the Gen AI solution. They are happy with the classical predictive solution. But now, after more than a year, I see that all those people who started early have more strong impression in the team. Because right now, everyone is running behind Gen AI thing. Right? So start early. Be authentic. Take inspiration. Give credit and add your contribution. Right? Be authentic. That is very important. Yeah. Uh, that's what I said in the beginning is that um, 10 years back, I did not know about AI. Now I know something about AI. Right? I mean, uh, still there are a lot more to learn. So be authentic. It's okay to say that I know I do not know everything. It's okay to say, hey, I do not know this particular thing. But I know X, Y, Z thing. And when you say I uh, do not know uh, these things, take inspiration from the people who know that. Be very open to give credits. That, okay, this is not I who build it. This is we who build it. I think uh, that lacks a lot of time uh, because... Uh, not more time I see, okay, uh, people are more self-centric. And then add your contribution. That is what, when you build a product, it's the product is not belong to one person or one team. Maybe a lot of team work together to build a product, right? Now, be regular. What it means is that, um, be regular is very common in a lot of things. When you, uh, at the end of the, uh, sorry, at the start of any year, we say, okay, now I will focus on my health. I will go to gym. January, a lot of people go to gym, but Feb onwards, it's declining. And I think this is common in all the things, even in the data and AI, right? So be regular. What it means is that if you're working on the solution, be regular. Do not think that, okay, I will change the world in a day. Have incremental progress. If you are learning something in data and AI, again, be regular. Do not think that, okay, think, uh, I will learn over the weekend, done. Have that regularity have that incremental change mindset then follow top contributors creator authors observe what they are doing right and differently that is important what they are doing right and differently so i follow a lot of people i follow sam antman i follow andre kapati i follow andrew ang and there are a lot more people whom i follow jeffrey hinton so um these are the researchers and the top people in the AI world. These are my favorites. Again, the list is not only to these uh, uh, five, 10 people. There are a lot more people who are influential in data and AI. There are a lot uh, more people who write very good content on Medium. I follow Medium a lot because I love reading blogs. So uh, have a list of those folks that whom you follow, whom you think that that relates to your aspirations and uh, skills and see how they are doing things differently. Doing things is not a big thing, right? But how you are solving a problem is very important. That's why uh, effective community and content is very important. Okay, sorry. Hmm. So add diversity, which means um, initially start with a blog, right? Because uh, blog, again, everything need effort. But if I start comparing blog video and conference, blog need uh, least effort, just go through a concept. It's a Penman techniques, which means that if you want to know how much you have learned, go and teach it to a five-year kid. Okay. So when writing a blog, the same thing. Start writing a blog in such a way that after completing the blog, when you read it, and read with a mindset that you don't know anything about the topic. And then if you're able to understand, bingo, you have cracked it. Video, I don't know. Video is not feasible for everyone. You need a lot of setup to uh, create the video. But okay, if you are interested in creating videos, go for it. And conferences. So once you feel that, okay, now you know something substantial, uh, please share it with the wider audience. To some platform, there are lots and lots of data science conferences in India and abroad. So pick one and go for it. Help other 
collective learning is most effective don't work in silo silo which means that uh, most of the time i see uh, people work in silo that okay uh, self centric kind of thought process um in my team uh, i say most of the folk is start uh, not everyone should start learning one concept right i always say that okay divide and conquer so if you want to learn a concept uh, jot down the topics that you need to learn and again uh, each one of you pick one topic and then do a collaborative learning which means that once uh, someone learn topic one have a sessions and then let everyone know about that topic so help other and collective learning again these things are really small but have bigger impact the moment when you start sharing uh, your concept or your learnings which means that you will improvise your storytelling concepts or storytelling attributes right so all these things are interconnected it's not like that someday you sit in front of a client and then you will learn how to uh, be a very good storyteller right that start from your own team that start from what you know and sharing with the wider audience now uh this is important and this is my favorite uh, don't do things just for the sake of getting awards badges jobs right i know job is important that is uh, very important for our livelihood that is very important to uh, maintain a healthy societal uh, balance but uh, I, i i correlate it with na that uh, i love to do data science work it's not because data science is uh, booming a lot it's not because it's a job no it's it's the secondary factor something what inspire me most is that every day Uh, i feel that okay my contribution to the project community or the uh, wider ai uh, society is having some impression right so i think uh, one of the uh, interview by very popular cricketer of india mahendra singh dhoni right he he quoted very well is that believe in the process not the results so that is what uh, i love to do and i think till now i'm successful in that that okay when i enjoy the process um the results are mostly good right so keep doing work things will happen things will fall at its place again why i'm telling these things tip number 7 is that i know um there are a lot of opportunities lot of people want to be in uh, data science how how am i fit in that role so believe in the process keep learning the concept keep doing the practice uh, keep reflecting your uh, uh, work on linkedin or github And, and and things will happen so that's why don't just do for the sake of getting rewards awards or badges believe in that and then do it and the last one is take the first step it does not have to be perfect right so i believe everyone who joined this session i think you have already took the first step might not be okay um uh, couple of you find okay technical to kuch baat hi nahi hua Uh, Ravi has not talked anything about technical thing, right? Uh, someone feel that okay, uh, the things that is discussed is something one need to know before uh, getting into the gravity of AI. But everyone who have joined this session, you have took the first step. Uh, maybe it is perfect, not perfect, but never shy or uh, be reluctant in taking that first step. Whether it be learning a new concept, whether it's taking a first step in. Uh, your project discussion may be the first question that you're going to ask with your client take it right now with that i conclude and um, i have added this detail one that is what i was talking about is that what is the road map of data scientist maybe uh, in some other session uh, i will talk only about this slides is that what are the details and nitty gritty but i will be sharing this uh, deck with uh, the team and uh, they will post it so that it can publicly available for you people and you can just start going with the flow mathematics probability statistics programming again uh, i talked about r but i do not say okay uh, focus on r my first language of programming is python i believe uh, that is what widely accepted by the world then machine learning deep learning lot more that's what i said things don't end at ml 
right? Deep learning, engineering of features, natural language processing. Then once you make the prediction, how to visualize it, deployments, a lot more. And at the end, keep practicing. So next is generativize the wave. So start early again for everyone um, who are looking to your career in data science. So these things you must need to know. You cannot escape from it. But try to explore the Gen AI world also. Uh, there are a lot of things, cool things happening. And Gen AI world, the best thing is that not every time to use the Gen AI thing, you need to be very much technical, right? Uh, Gen AI have a lot of rules. Even if you're not technical, then also you can use Gen AI and build a lot, lot more things. Again, maybe one session I will only talk about Gen AI for different profiles, business, tech, non-tech kind of thing. And that's all. Uh, this is a number. Finally, I concluded with the number. What this means is that um, this is very popular in Atomic Habit. There's a book on Atomic, there's a book name Atomic Habit, which means 1% progress every day talks about 37.8% progress in a year. That's why be regular and you will see the good amount of growth in your career, in your knowledge base, a lot more things. Okay. So thank you. That's all from my side. Um, let me uh, address a couple of questions. So um, I'm just going through the questions. Uh, how how do one decide about best possible baseline and KPI to the problem statement? Um, okay, so th that's what I talked about. There is no such list of best possible baseline and KPI. Statistically, there are a list, okay? which means that when you're going to the regression problem statement, these are the five, six evolution metrics classification. These are the five, six. If you go with the deep learning, these are the five, six. But the KPIs that you need to talk to the business. It is not like that. Okay. Hypothetically, you can pick anything. Talk to the business, then build the KPI, how to evaluate the effectiveness of um, the solution, and then go back to the client that these are the five, six KPI that I have finalized. Okay. Now, um, uh, next one, what will be the roadmap for the folks who come from non-development background? What I mean by that is I might be expert in agile area business analyst and domain uh, subject matter expert and carry multiple vertical expertise. As you said, I have expertise in my area having uh, said that don't have expertise in programming like Python. So do uh, I still have future scope for me? Sorry, I know a lengthy question. No worries. Yeah. So I got the gist that if you're a non-tech background person, uh, that's what I, if you see towards the end, when I talked about the Gen AI now, I said that to uh, build data product for Gen AI or with the help of Gen AI, you don't need to be too technical. So maybe uh, you can explore uh, the Gen AI things for program managers, Gen AI things for agile. And by that, you can you can have more impact on your team. So not every data science need to code in Python. Not every data science need to do model.fit and model.predict, right? There are a lot more. Maybe you can work on tools. Look for data analyst thing. Where there are less programming, more on tooling, building the dashboard. You can learn the tool and then start building the creative dashboards. And then you are a program manager, business analyst. Um, you can easily do it. So business analyst with data analyst. That's a very great combination. Uh, Prakash, let's say a person got a job in some XYZ sector as data science, but did not have a business knowledge. How challenging for him, even though he is technically uh, excellent. Or it is just that we need to choose that field of DS where we have. No, 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 no. Prakash, again, uh, when I joined Publicis Secret, my first project was on automobile. Uh, I need to build recommendation system for automobile company. Okay. So what I believe is that till now have not seen any organization who said that, okay, um, if you do not have domain knowledge, I will not give you the project. 
most of the organization will give you ample time to understand the business now this statement is true for um junior and mid level i don't know about experience uh, but if you are senior level people that time you need to know the business yaar that is the non negotiable because at the experience of a senior i cannot say that okay uh, you don't know data science you don't know business but i can hire you ye nahi hoga na so at the uh, entry or uh, mid level if you know the concept you do not know the business you can say boldly that hey i don't have much knowledge about the business because i have not worked on it but given some time i can learn the business and then concept of building the solution is same right so be flexible be agile prakash and be open also uh rupesh can you please explain more about writing articles publication paper like where to do them and how long they should be okay uh start with medium rupesh and again everyone medium is very easy to write medium blogs just uh, read couple of medium blogs and then try to find out which blog you love to read then start reading such kind of blog then build a pattern out of that and then start writing it so first step is writing blog on medium very easy to start and then you can go for writing a research paper maybe in archive or uh ultrapally so baby steps one step at a time is it fine to start with ds study at age of 36 although uh, already although one already have four finance credit with 35 uh, i think uh, uh, the question which says about ds career at the age of 36 and um, i have a finance background and all so i think the answer remains the same uh, where i talked about leveraging gen ai uh, to build the solutions being a data analyst right so for you also if you uh, at the age of 36 i don't know means uh, there are corner cases people started late and then become pro so that might be scenario but if i go with the average case not the corner case so what you can start leveraging gen ai for the business without code you can build lot of product in gen ai even you can uh, look for data analyst where you don't need to learn lot of programming rather you need to learn a tool like tableau or power bi and then creating lot of meaningful uh, financial insights for banking client right okay sanjay malhotra can you tell us about iot organizations uh, i don't have much experience about iot uh, but i believe samsung qualcomm all the chip making company are working a lot on iot techs right so sorry buddy i have not worked on iot so if i do not know i cannot uh, claim lot of things so let me go to the further so can you tell us about iot or across industry now have understood the importance of processing this data for the success and growth and have started uh, investing in implementing big data tech that will uh, make them data driven in their day to day business so the later part sanjay malhotra is absolutely true uh, for iot things i think uh, explore the chip making company in india they work lot on iot things or automobile sector theek hai uh okay pradeep uh, can you please let me know how to get more real project in data science for practice uh, participate in hackathon pradeep ji and this is for everyone theek hai so if you want to get more real time feeling participate in hackathon just go on google and type data hackathon 2024 you will get lot of um links now go through the problem statement i am not uh, talking any one platform any one hackathon because i don't know the diversity of the knowledge you have right so go on google data science hackathon ai hackathon 2024 you will get lot of analytics with their uh, uh, google lot of banking sector do open uh, uh hackathon tech gig so go through each of the competition 
read the problem statement and then try to see that whether you are interested in solving that problem statement or not. Again, just for participating in uh, uh, that for the namesake of participating in hackathon, do not do it. Right? If you feel that, okay, this problem is something which you love to solve it, go and participate in that. So that is the next step of Kegel. Uh, Kilesh, I have a business. I have uh, I have the business knowledge as a part of my internal audit experience at Big Four. Great. Uh, I was uh, good in analyzing business data as a part of my role. Great. Now I've opted for data science and business analytics course at Accredian. Do you think I should also opt for AI? No, 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 no. Again, start small, Kilesh. I think you're at the right track, right? So you had audit experience in big four. You joined the Accredian course of data science and BA. I think you're on the right track. Right now, you just need to complete this course and then do evaluation. That now you are getting that opportunity in the market that you are looking for. I think you will easily get it. There are a lot of data analytics role in big four as well as financial organization. And then uh, after completing these things, if you feel that name, uh, I need some deep learning advanced concept, then go for it. Right? So, you know, incremental steps. Don't uh, take a lot of dishes in your plate and then could not able to finish it. Right? Rather have one dish and finish it. So I think you are on the right track. Hilesh. You don't need to uh, worry about that. Just focus, give your 100%. Um, Apart from the course, there are a lot of things on Google. So let's say you learn X topic, uh, go detail in that, do the assignments, and then um, go on Google and see that what all things there are, there are associated with that particular uh, topic or the subject. Right? Cool. I all right, guys. So as much as we would like to hear from Ravi all day, it's time to let him go. It's uh, already past the time. So thank you so much, Ravi. It was such a wonderful session and it has been a pleasure hosting you. We really appreciate you taking out the time for us and taking us through such amazing insights. Hope we can do this again sometime. Yes, sure. And yeah, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great day too. And guys, also there is a feedback form in the chat. Please fill it up. It really helps us to bring you more such sessions. And do not worry about the recordings or anything or even the deck. Everything will be uploaded on your LMS as well. So, and also I would like to please, again say, please fill out the feedback form. It's in the chat. Thank you so much for everyone who joined in.